just been watching some content tonight and um <clears throat> and I'm just kind of thinking um uh, what's it called reflecting on some of the stuff that's come out from BGS uh Edward um or Ed Anderson and um the Grinch or Grinch God uh even uh Knights Templar and um <clears throat> one of the things that they you know that've been you know one of the terms that I've like not coined but I like to use is blue pill rage this this is also synonymous or uh yeah this is also synonymous with uh blue pill despair and a lot of we're seeing a lot of that and it shows up in you know different ways it shows up in a lot of men coming to this space and wanting to like they came to this space to become aware they became aware they fixed themselves and then now they're like on the other side of it trying to pull brothers out of it but the way that they're trying to pull brothers out of it and i'm talking about cj uh or cj and b or clarence uh, whatever he calls himself now but um cj and b or cj and mb or whatever but and then even sergeant willie pete where you see a lot of these guys they're so consumed with the rhetoric of this space the rhetoric of those anti this space, those against this space, that you start to see where they become, you know, the Agent Smith. They become, you know, uh, the anti red pillars, you know, like it's like it's like that person that that's been in a war so long that they join the other side as a double agent or become a double agent just so they can end the war. You talk, you hear uh, Sergeant Willie Pete, where he re, like he talks about how you know uh, it should be so like we should have our, our spot so laid out that you know the the bitch never want to leave and all this other stuff, right? You know, like you should have a, a bathroom and then a see through fireplace or a fish tank that you could see through the bathroom, and she's just taking a hot bubble pa- a hot bubble bath, and you laying in the bed just chilling, and he, and she never want to leave, and it's just like. To be honest, if you pay a streetwalker $500 and offer her a shower, this dog about to go off, and offer her a shower and say, hey, listen, man, you can stay in this room until tomorrow, you know, like, she'll never want to leave that. Like, so, (laughs) you hear some of this stuff that people are talking about, and that's not the, and that's not, that's not what we're trying to do. You know, um, we shouldn't be doing things for a woman we should be doing things for ourselves and it benefits the woman that wants this and it's a benefit to the woman that wants to be with us it's a benefit to the woman that stays with us it's a benefit to the men and women that um want to be a part of what we're trying to put together right whether it be your business partners whether it be your friends or anything else you know um for instance i have a friend it's his birthday uh, coming up and he wants to go out on a boat and everything else like that and he's like man you gotta come you gotta come but i've been getting sick a lot lately i also got the dog so it's like who can i have to take care of the dog the local kennel or uh, local guy uh he is booked right now so he can't get me in this weekend so i'm probably just gonna have to sit this one out and i kind of want to sit this one out anyway because i've just been getting sick a little bit too much and i'm just trying to stay away from people but you start to see the blue pill despair the blue pill rage rear its ugly head where they start having they start questioning some of uh, some of the the, the the heavy hitters in the space. The ones that I consider heavy hitters, ones that I listen to on a regular basis that help me shape my worldview in so many ways. Your BGS is where you have CJ coming up and trying to talk to BGS. And every time he's questioned, you could hear him not just glitching or not just trying to um, avoid answering the question. Uh, and not just trying to uh, figure out a good way of saving face or a way of saving face in, in, in any way he can, but really glitching because his programming cannot reconcile what's happening. His programming says, hey, this is an issue. I know it's an issue, but I can't, I can't see, I can't get past this. I can't, you know, um... I can't 
answer my way out of this. I can't explain my way out of this. I have to say something to ensure that, you know, the gynocracy and um, all the things around me that I know as my world doesn't crumble or break around me. This has to stay for my son, my daughter to inherit. They have to inherit my position on the plantation. And you start to see where they become consumed of it, with it. And they start to talk against red pill ideology. They start to talk against uh, Ibmore, SYSBM and all these other things. And they're saying, no, you're doing it wrong. You should be, um, you know, you should be pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. You guys are all just whining. That's just not the problem here. You're the problem. She's not the problem. So on and so forth. And it's like, you know, I understand it to a certain extent. You know, the women really, well, the women are a problem. But the women really aren't the root of the problem. Some, the biggest root of the, or the main root of the problem is the choice that we make as men in terms of our choices, reclaiming our choices, and in terms of our, um, um, our inability to actually be upfront with our emotions, to say, hey, listen, this is a problem. I don't feel well with this situation and expressing ourselves as men. And not feeling like we're crying or being a bitch or being effeminate in any which way. I've said that in a video before where we've already reclaimed choice. And a lot of men are aware that these choices are theirs to make again. Because the programming is so deep that it's like the program has literally programmed us out of our free will. But now we're starting to say, okay, I have free will. And also I'm going to be unapologetic about it. And that's the whole reclaiming emotions. But you're starting to see where a lot of these men are coming back and they're starting to be uh, uh, blue pill ragers, uh, blue pill despair like folks. You know, when they start to talk like the other side, you know, your uh, divested zealots, your Cynthia G's, uh, your Chrissy's, uh, you, you know, whoever else is out there talking all this trash about men. And not, you know, taking accountability for their own issues and their own um, shortcomings in a lot of ways. So when you see this, you know, understand what it is. These are a lot of men that are glitching. They don't know how to reconcile. They don't know how to um, reconcile or they don't know how to. Their code does not allow them to accept the things that we're saying as men out here. They're not allowing, they're not, allow, their code does not allow them to say, hey, this is a problem. Why is she talking to me like this? I am worth more, even in this situation. I do provide for this person. I don't ask her for much of anything. Nothing that she's not going to do for herself. What, to cook and clean? You know, hey, listen, I, 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 I grew up in a Jamaican household. My dad was a better cook to me, at least. I like my dad's food more than I like my mom's food. Now, my mom has some dishes where it's just like, yo, pops, you can't touch that. But at the same time, they were both there. They both cleaned. They both cooked. They both provided for the home. But when it came time for um, when it when it came time for my or when my mom started to make more money, she pretty much got rid of my dad. And that's how my dad says it, you know, like I talked to him about it and I asked him. And, you know, there's two sides to every story. But I see how my mom works and how my mom acts. And I could see what he's talking about. I have my own issues as well. So there's that part. But, you know, you have to understand that a lot of these men are in these positions and they don't know how to um, accept this. Their programming won't allow them to. It's always an issue for them. It always will be an issue for them. This dog is playing with a frog. You know, and it always will be an issue for them. They don't know how to handle change. They're so deep. This is why I talk about things like stepping away from the space, knowing how to disconnect, doing things um, that's in your best interest uh, in terms of like, okay, hey, um, I need to, uh, what's it called? Hey, I, I need to, I need to step away from this space known as the manosphere, the black manosphere or what have you for my own mental health. So I need to figure out, I need to go on this journey alone. I need to go, I need to take this path alone. This path will lead back to you, my brothers, hopefully one day, and maybe it doesn't, 
But at the end of the at like, but see, but what I need to do for myself and my own progress, I need to make this journey. Um, I need to make this uh, pilgrimage on my own. And sometimes we have to do that. But when you get so wrapped up in this space and you stay in it for so long, it the miasma it permeates your body, it permeates your mind, it permeates every bit of you to where you think about it and you forget all the things that are happening in your real in your actual excuse me reality. Because whether you know it or not, a lot of this YouTube stuff, online stuff, this is like virtual reality to a certain extent. It's not your VR goggles. You're not, um, but you, it's not you're just your VR goggles or anything like that. But you are immersed in this content. Your knee deep, your ankle deep, what have you. Maybe you got your big toe in there, your pinky toe, whatever. But you are in this um, space, this virtual space. And this space will do a lot because you start to think about it. You start to talk with other people about this stuff when you um when you're in the barber shops when you're out at the stores you know it starts to really um <laughs> you start to approach a woman you be like ah oh, on the strat killer i'm gonna i'm gonna take this bitch i'm gonna, you know i'm gonna take this bitch and knock her head off real quick and keep it moving you know some shit like that or <laughs> you might be a you know have an edward anderson moment and then somebody says something and you'd be like that is not accurate um, I challenge everything that you're saying. Here is the proof, and you need to stop. Sit down. This is some bullshit, you know. Or I, that's not a good Edward Anderson. Um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> uh, what's it called? Uh, it's not a good. Uh, what's a uh, depiction of him or whatever? Um, but then you are you're a BGS where you're like, okay, you prove it. Prove it. I've already done this research. I've proven my point. You prove yours. Well, BGS, I can't. Well, then, you know, you need to stop talking. <laughs> Again, that's not a good BGS impersonation. That's the right word. But you start to see where we get so deep into this. And we're seeing men. Uh, and I, this, is, this is all about pattern recognition for me. Because we're seeing men that are being this. That are, uh, or uh, not being this, but they're the embodiment of this. They're showing who they are. They're showing how they actually take in this information and they're just so deep that they can't get out of it. And you tell them and you give them everything and they can answer every question. I mean, listen to that video where uh, BGS started grilling CJ and anytime it went down the path of leading to their, you know, the father could take responsibility for it. He answered those questions so quickly, but then BGS flipped it on him. And it's just like, he knows the flip is coming yet, yet and still he can't avoid it. That's just how deep the programming is. That's just, that's just like saying, hey, listen, I know my turn is coming up, but my programming says there's a shorter path by going one mile further. And it's just like, but that adds a mile to the trip. I know, but I know this path is shorter. Not because it actually is shorter, because it feels shorter. It feels better. It looks nicer. It goes past the better homes. It avoids the hood. It, 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 um, it doesn't allow you to be like it doesn't allow this woman to be account accountable for her actions with her womb in your eyes. If I said it's all the men's fault, somehow, some way, that's going to solve the problem. That's going to make the journey that much shorter. But you're doing all this to circumvent everything in terms of what that woman is doing, what that woman is actually saying, what that woman is actually uh, what that woman is um, exhibiting and putting your own children through your future. The ones that will take your space in this plantation with less than you did, than you had, because you're not doing more for them. Damn bugs. You're not doing more for them. You're not leaving anything for them. With all of that, it feels better not to blame her. It feels better not to say it's her problem. It's her fault. It feels better to say it's all on me. Ain't nothing to do with her. And this is what we're dealing with. This is the blue pill rage. This is the blue pill despair. The blue pill rage to me is where these guys are you know, um, overly mad and dramatic about these things. The blue pill despair is where they start to draw you into it. They start to listen. It's like hate fucking. They start to hate listen. 
you know, or despair listen. Uh, it's like uh, if you ever listen to Dave Ramsey and you hear the people like like I, I'll be I'll, I'll put myself in this. I'll be in like X amount of money in debt. And it's just like somehow I feel better listening to somebody on a Dave Ramsey show who is in more debt than me. Oh, I'm not as dumb as that person. I only got 20 grand. They got 50. They got 100. Yeah, I'm, yeah no, I got I got I have investments. But then if I look at my net um if i look at my net uh what is they what do they call that <laughs> i forgot what they, you know I'm re- i always like mess up with these words but if i look at my net um capital or my net oh man net value i forgot what they call that thing you know but um if i look at my net right my gross you know everything i have in terms of my investments and then all my debts I'm worse than these people or just as bad because some of these people might have a hundred grand in debt, but they have 200 grand in assets. So they still have a hundred grand in net assets, right? Net, um, net positive or whatever, you know? And then you start to see where it's just like, if I look at myself, I'll be in the negative in comparison. And that's, that's really sad because we put ourselves through these things. We, we tell ourselves that I'm better than that person. That's the blue pill despair. Oh, I'm not like these niggas out here. I don't complain about women. Women don't do, like women can't make me do anything. Women can't make me feel any type of way. Women can't dictate, you know, uh, whether my child is born or not. That's on me because it's my seed and I put it in her. But if you told her, I want the child and she still aborts it. Is that still your choice? And you can't tell him that because when he, when, he, when BGS said that to CJ, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to say. He could not say that she has control of fertility. Because for some reason in his programming, he can't give up control. Or he can't give up. Not even It's not even control and he knows it. It's he can't give up blame. The buck stops here is me as a man. You know, hey, listen, you got all these single mothers out here and those are men that are reckless with their seed and they're not doing what they're supposed to and all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. Hey, CJ, have you married your baby moms? Nah, but that's still my choice. No, or nah, she's not a statistic. Nah, she's not the problem, it's me. Like, do you hear what you just said, bro? Yeah, I know. Don't worry about it. It's still good. It's still good. Like, <laughs> this is what this is what we're listening to in a Sergeant Willie Pete. This is what we're listening to in a CJ. This is what we're seeing in comment sections. This is what you're hearing from other brothers where they're always saying it's all on you as a man. And the thing is, to a certain extent, I will agree with them. It is up to us as a man. I really wish that a lot of men would just you know, go full John Goat and just shrug, you know, Atlas shrug and say, hey, listen, that's not my problem. That's up to you. I'm going to just walk away. I really wish a lot of brothers would do more of that. But it's not a perfect world. And to be honest, this world as we have it is as close as it will get to perfect. With that being said, I have to... I have to fix something. Alrighty. Thank you as always for listening. And I hope what I said made some type of sense and helped you brothers out in some way, shape or form. And uh, I really wish my dog would stop eating bugs. But um, yeah, I guess, you know, they're good. They're high in protein. Look at this. Look at this. She's eyeing that bug right there. She's probably going to puke later on. Alrighty. With that being said, love you all. Wish you all the best. And, uh, you know, don't get too caught up in the debt porn. It can consume you. You might not see the fact that you're in more debt than the people that are on the show. Peace.